Do you want to go for another half an hour and give us the last one? <laughs> <laughs> yes, welcome back to the Brad Ethan Podcast, episode 116. And if you're watching on YouTube, you'll see that there is no one sitting on what would be the left of screen, which is where the guests would usually be. But actually, no, there is someone there because it's Ethan Roth. There's yep. just no one on my <laughs> left, right of screen. G'day, Ethan. Not an athlete, that's who it is. Yeah, it's something different. Well, uh, you could be an athlete. Uh, Cricket finals. Yes, that's true. Once this is out, hopefully we've won a flag. But um, <laughs> something a bit different. A lot of Q&A sent in. Bit mm-hmm. of a, a season preview for the Colt season, PSA, yeah. this week. So, um, yeah, so we're going to discuss some players and a bit of predictions. Mm. So, uh, you've got the Q&As on your phone because there's been a heap there's sent a in. Lot. So, are you going to go through them as we go through the episode if they come up? Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, just to put it out there, I think a lot of the names have been sent in. We've already got. Yeah. Um, so if we don't cover someone, then probably, you know, PSA, <laughs> there's only so much research you can do mm-hmm. and that. So yeah. um, No official yeah. stats or anything. So, But of yeah, course, we'll look, do our best. Of course, it's all thanks to Skimbro and Hat Locker. You can use both the same codes, Bray and Ethan 20 for 20% off at each store. If, if you want to go to Skimbro, skimbro.com and you can get the essentials kit for 54.99 and with 20% off that is very very handy hat locker as well same code 20% off at hatlocker.com.au and of course cheetah clothing um well let's get stuck straight into it Ethan. i think claremont we'll start with the premiers from last year and the waffle colts uh they had a lot of underage players from that flag who are now primed and ready to go at the top age Colts footy. They're stacked. Let's make no mistake about yeah. that. Uh, Austin van der Strijf, probably the top player. He played for WA in last year's under 18 champs as a as an underager and as well as the, I guess, curtain raiser for the um, AFL Academy. Not in the AFL Academy, but uh, a, a lot of sort of endurance and speed on the wing and, and at half back. And um, they're very, very exciting. So there's so many names from Claremont. Mm-hmm. Um, they're just, they would the best team last year might not have finished top top of the ladder, but um, yeah, another name Tom Seckle mentioned with us yep. l- a couple of weeks back. Uh, Hamish Davis is another name to watch out for. Kicked over thirty goals in the PSA last year for Hale, uh, fairly early, and um, just kicked goals for fun at Claremont, including five in just his fourth game. So uh, he is uh, to say it's impressive is an understatement. Yeah, and they've got depth everywhere. Guys like Will Hayes, Cody, and Gove. They've got a lot of speed. And I guess they're going through the summer squad. They've got a fair stack. I think it looks like that's eight or nine players in the summer squad. So they're pretty stacked. They are. It's uh, it's almost traditional for, for mm. Claremont to be. Obviously, the, the full squad for the champs haven't been named. But early indication is they're going to have a lot of representatives in there. And um, Adam Jones said someone who we might not be fully aware of just yet. But a lot of Q&As about him. Clancy Dennis, uh, he's somewhat unknown, but was really impressive in the the WA Black versus Gold match at Coburn. Mm-hmm. Uh, 192 c uh, t- 192 centimetre key position, pinched hit in the ruck a bit last year. Looking at some hit outs, and um, we know what Zane Zakaselski did last year, how he came about. So you don't have to necessarily be a household name in in January, March or April yeah. to be uh, up there. Later in the year, so Clancy Dennis is uh, one that a lot of Q&A is sent in about, so mm. a name to watch out for. But guys like Riley Desisto and Bailey Banfield, they can still play Colts this year, but you would expect, especially uh, Bailey Banfield, having been a train on at West Coast, I'm pretty sure, over the pre-season, they'd be looking yeah. to play league, if not reserves footy. They will be, so I think they might not be used in the Colts unless they're really desperate. Mm. Yeah. Um, where do you think Claremont will finish? Any, I, I, I personally can't see them not making finals. Yeah. I think they're going to be right up there in the pointy end. Um, I think they'll be playing definitely in that prelim final if they don't qualify through that qualifying final. Yeah, they're definitely going to be in the top three at the pointy end of the year. Obviously, availability with PSA as well. Um, yeah, that's the that's the big thing as well. How many guys of these guys go to um, Scotch or Christchurch or Hale, wherever they're yep. from? They're probably the biggest waffle club in the waffle in terms of PSA talent. They are. They've oh. got three schools very close by, and a lot of that cult, good Colts talent will probably be playing PSA footy. And I know there's a bit of controversy about them having advantages and that sort yeah. of thing, but I think it's at the same time a testament to their, I guess, their ability well, to identify talent. If they don't finish top three, talent. if they don't finish top three, 
they'll get all their PSA players back and they'll have a good finals run mm. in the last couple of weeks in the season. That's yep. how I see them going. Um, and your grand final? I think grand final, yep. yep. All right, East Frio. Finished third last year. Always a talented zone, aren't they, out there yep. at Shark Park. And they're back at Shark Park as well. They are. Uh, this year. But uh, always a talented cult side. And they're never re- they've never really got a heap of PSA talent. So they're never re- always getting affected by that. Sometimes yep. they might but not necessarily as big as, say, Claremont. Yeah, I mean, they're Aquinas. There's a bit of a connection there. A um, yeah, little bit. You know, you look at someone like Ashton Warner, yep. who's probably not had the... He's had opportunity at East Rio, but obviously PSA commitments no, come no, first. No way as big as Claremont. Yeah, no no comparison there. But yep. um, just speaking to Malachi off-air... A couple of weeks uh, ago. A couple of weeks ago, and just hearing a bit of pieces from WA Circles, Luke Urquhart is seriously flying under the radar. There's been some massive raps on him internally, about what he can do, not only for the Sharks, but uh, for WA. He looks really athletic for 190 centimetres, 190 mm. centimetres. Like, WA talent just keeps producing these big kids, like Ruben <laughs> Jinby, Clay Hall. Like, what are they – I don't know what they're, they're eating or what they're doing as juniors, but, um, yeah, there's been some massive raps on him as someone who has flown under the radar. Um, Another one, Aquinas, so Aquinas product. Mount Pleasant, so you only have to look at recent success out of there with Logan McDonald, yeah. that area. But um, in terms of other players at East Frio, Bailey Morgan has been someone who, another strong player. Ashton Warner, as we said, we know about Chad and, and Corey at Sydney, but some say he's the best out of the Warners, which is a big <laughs> call. Yeah. But considering he made his Colts debut at 15, 16, clearly he's talented. Yeah. Um, and then outside of that, Con Sanchez will still be eligible, but considering he was probably arguably the most unlucky player in the country to not be picked up last year, was ranked 32 on Fox Footy's uh, calculations mm. on the on the list that they show on the side on the draft. Um, you'd expect him to have a crack at East Freo's league if his yeah. body can hold up. So promising signs, I think, for East Freo. Um, for me, I think they'll make finals at Colts level. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, you know just don't know with uh, injuries and that and form where they can challenge but yeah East Frio uh, they're just so they're consistent I'd say in terms of Colts footy and not a lot of I guess star players as well say as Claremont because yep. they've only got the two that were in the summer summer squad so you know that could mean good things mm-hmm. <laughs> you might not have a lot of players that miss footy due to the under 18s carnival throughout yep. um, July June July whatever it is um, so that could be a potential advantage for them yeah, ladder wise. Well, you need that balance between stars and role players. Exactly. In any do. level of footy. Prediction? Uh, I think, uh, I'm just going to say finals. There is a temptation to say top three, but uh, we've got a few other clubs to get through. So yeah. I'll say I'll say finals, and, and from there, I'm, I guess time will tell. And they're usually always thereabouts. Yep. Uh, East Freo, so I think they'll be playing finals as well. We'll move on to the other east side. That's East Perth. Finished seventh last year. Unfortunately, no players in the state program, but... Guys will definitely pop up as the first couple of rounds go on and make that state squad in July. Just have to look at someone like Xavier Walsh. Yep, you do. Uh, Having said that, though, with key players of recent years, such as Will Cassidy, too old to play Colts anymore, they will need others to step up. Mm. Um, Obviously, have a strong connection to Trinity College, so availability will be crucial, I guess, both ways. to Trinity's success, but then East Perth's um, success. So, uh, yeah, it's... East Perth, I guess it's a bit of a wait and see. Transition period, you could say. Um, so, yeah. And uh, Jacob Eddington came third in the standing vertical jump as well in the pre-season testing. So, potentially a bit of talent there. Yep. Did make the squad, as you said. Yep. And uh, uh, is there? Thomas Zinni has sent in a question saying, Lockie Bird, Trinity College has been an elite form in practice game. So, a bit of yeah. a... A Trinity shout out there. Uh, Zayden La- Ladyman, uh, <laughs> Andrew Gull06 says, asks us, is Zay- Zayden Ladyman the best draft prospect out of East Perth ever? Well, there's been some pretty good names over the years. Uh, <laughs> think of the 2021 draft class, Jai yeah. Amos, um, some other boys in the state program that year, such as Ethan Regan, Kate Dittmar. So yeah. I don't know if these are the best ever, but a bit of a watch this space. I just gave Jacob Eddington a bit of a mention there. He's also had third in the running Vertical jump with 90 centimetres as well. So definitely got some jump. Absolutely. I think East Perth um, expectation, I don't 
see why they couldn't potentially uh, look for like a fifth spot in the finals, but I yeah. think it's going to be a hard year. I just think, um, you know, the guys like Will Cassidy, I said, too, too old to play Colts now mm. as an 04, been carrying that side. I think they're going to need others to step up, and I'm struggling to see where that can come from when it comes to playing games against Claremont, uh, East Frio, etc. Um, you know, you need you need your depth. So, yeah, a bit of a watch the space, but that's not to say they won't win games. Yeah, for sure. So, I, yeah, I think they'll be fifth to seventh in that yeah. sort of range. They might play finals and they might just miss out. But we'll move on to this next side and, oh boy, it is stacked. Peel Thunder, they've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine players in the state summer squad, which means there is a heap of talent. They there. keep delivering. They finished sixth last year, so a bit of a disappointment after winning the flag the year before. Yeah. Um, Bo Allen, arguably the, our top prospect in the state alongside Malachi, AFL Academy member and played close to, if not all, the state 18 games last year as a defender. Mm. Um, reports suggest, I've heard Adam Jones speak, that he's going to move into the midfield, sort of what Ruben Jinby did um, in his 18 year, obviously was a defender. You know, similar player, left foot, big body at 189 centimetres. Um, and I'd sed- I'd say the, the raging favourite to be captain of WA at this point in time. You know, talk about character. It's some someone who's who's very mature and very, um, I guess, established off the field as well. But unfortunately, for a Colts point of view, probably going to be playing a bit of league footy. Yeah, has done that in the pre-season. Yep. Um, it's slotted in pretty, pretty seamlessly, so... Having said that, though, they've got guys like Dean Roberts, who's a, who's a classy midfielder, um, was emergency for WA's champs last year in the 18s, and, and Basil Hart, who's an early draft contender for 2025, right. uh, if, we, if we think that far ahead, <laughs> after taking home the MVP at the under-16s champ. So yep. um, a bottom major in the 18s. So Peel Thunder, um, obviously a flag in, in 2022, disappointing year. You'd expect them to, to bounce back. Um, with some of those players and, and that that depth. Mm, for sure. Well, prediction? Again, I think I think finals, I think they should be aiming for top three. Mm, um, they're in the same boat as Claremont for me. They've done Should've well when it comes to finals in recent years. You think of 2019, they made the grand final. Obviously, 2022, we touched on one the flag. When they make finals at Colts level, they usually go deep. Yep. Um, so it's just a matter played of... played in, I think... Two, maybe three grand finals in the last five or six years, yeah. I think. Especially when their backs are against the wall. So it's just about, I yeah. guess, qualifying. And then, it's as we know, it's a whole new season in itself. Indeed. Well, yeah. So I think top three for sure for Peel Thunder. We'll move on to Perth. Grand finalists last year. Went, went pretty much undefeated for the first half of the season, I think it was. And um, probably were the best team all year for them. Like we've already said, Claremont got all their PSA players back and made it a 10 times stronger side. I guess they were just a bit too strong for Perth on grand final day. Yeah, it was a disappointing loss, but I guess fair effort from where they've come from. That yeah. last quarter from memory, they had some chances. And just in crucial moments, they dropped some marks. There was, yeah, I guess Claremont just stood up when it mattered most. And Perth has always been known um, in, say, like the last five or so years as a, you get cut from another waffle club in your Colts program, then you go, oh, I'm going to go play for Perth. Yeah. Play for Perth. But now, they've made a grand final. And it's not, I don't think they're going to be known as that sort of club anymore. Yeah. You, you always like to see Perth doing well, yeah. no matter what grade it is, after some recent struggles. Uh, from a player perspective, Cooper Moore looks to be the standout mm. player. Already signed with Hemisphere Management and uh, has some real pace. His brother actually coached the uh, Colts boys last year. So, interesting dynamic, that with a brother-brother relationship. But um, reports are that, you know, that doesn't sort of affect... Their, their relationship treated like a normal player. And I think the thing with Cooper that I've sort of heard is he's just constantly wanting to get better yep. and improve, whether that's on the field or in off the field with uh, recovery and those sort of things. So um, the Scoble twins are still going to be around the place. Mm-hmm. You'd expect Elijah to push for, for senior selection. Um, Caleb Dempster Park, who had a remarkable year last mm-hmm. year, was playing Amos footy at the start and then won the Colts' best and fairest. Unfortunately, he's not longer eligible for Colts um, as an 04. Same with Oscar Hein baston mm. who played league last year. They have recruited Jack Clark medalist Riley Wheels from Subiaco, but unfortunately yeah. another 04 born. So yeah, I don't think he'd be playing uh, Colts footy anyway if he was yeah. eligible. I think he would be probably pushing for that senior side, you would think. Yeah. 
Um, so I think they, these guys will no doubt help their yeah. league team and reserves, but I think it could stretch the depth of their Colts quite a bit. And, you know, I think a grand final, to back up a grand final appearance for a second second year, can't say, I'm not saying it can't be done, but I think it's, it's going to be tough. And um, guys around Cooper and Moore are going to have to step up, especially when he plays, you know, champs and that. Yeah, for sure. So it'll be... Yeah, interesting to say. They've got some speed as well. Lachlan McTaggart, yep. I believe it is. A lot of Q&As about him. Yeah, okay. Well, he got uh, 2.939 second in a 20-meter sprint uh, in the uh, preseason. Brody Donkin, 7.9 seconds in the agility test, which is another good score. And Lockie uh, Mama, Mama, I believe it is. 21.08 in the yo-yo test. And I can't, I've, I've only done the yo-yo test once and I can't remember how that exactly <laughs> works, but I'm pretty sure uh, that is a pretty good score with the, I guess, Austin champion, uh, Chapman, sorry, from West Perth got 22.01. So not too far off the top there for Lockie. Yeah. So Perth, I think, unfortunately, I think they might have a bit of a, a down year when it comes to, Finals, I hope I'm wrong, yeah. but um, I don't think they're going to bottom out completely. Like, I don't think they're going to win the wooden spoon. Maybe like a sixth or seventh finish yeah. somewhere around there. And Brody Duncan as well. He finished outright top for the vertical jump with 78 centimetres, which is a bloody long yeah. way. So your prediction? I'm going to say, if I had to put a ladder position, sixth or seventh. Yeah, okay. Wouldn't be surprised, but then I also wouldn't be surprised if they... Yeah, third to fifth. Yeah, Perth. Hey, well, that's not me at all wanting that to happen. I'd just give you my <laughs> honest opinion. Yeah, of course. We say the same about East Perth as well. Yep. We both sort of predicted them to be just outside. South Freo. Now, this is another uh, club, uh, I guess, who are looking pretty strong going through. There's, I think, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven players who have been in the summer squad over the preseason. So they'll be looking to improve on last year where they finished wooden swooners. But you can say they did go through a big transition level, I guess, through all levels of footy last year. Yep. And hopefully this year they can improve. And they've got what seems to be a pretty talented squad. If there was the, uh, if I could put the best team when it came to underages, by far South Fremantle. Yeah. So many boys that are eligible 2025. Yeah. Um, when you look at their cult side, they're stacked when it comes to 2025 yeah. top-age talent. Fred Rodriguez, Max Garrett, Toby Wan, to name a few. Toby's brother, Jacob Wan, who was in the state Toby, squad last 21. year. Toby, 21.08 in the yo-yo test, which is a pretty good score. Third. Yep. Uh, sorry, second, that was. Yep. So he's in the state squad, and uh, his brother uh, was in the free NGA last year, so talented family. Yeah. Um, I say they're, they're underages, but don't rule these guys out to have an impact at Colts level and potentially WA 18s. As they get more exposure, yeah. um, Jackson Artemis has been involved in the state setup for a while, as we've heard with Tom Seckle, and he's a, an exciting prospect. Um, outside of that, I can't see Ashton Ferreira featuring too much at Colts level, even though he still is eligible, unless they're super desperate. Um, given just the way he was able to jump up to league last year, one of the best on ground, and I'll never forget his debut, the on Ferrari. Track for 40. So, yeah, on track for 40 in the, in the first quarter. On track for 60, I think it was, in the first quarter, according to the commentators. So... Yeah, as I said, by far at the moment, underage talent for South Freo, but don't discount what they can do from a Colts point of view and also players, I guess, playing above their age group um, mm. in, in state. So will they be playing finals in your opinion? I think this could go either way. I think they could sneak in. I think they could just miss out. Um, oh, put be on the spot here. I think, I think they might just miss out potentially. Time okay. to tell, but um, yeah, it's it's just the it's the crystal ball. Like, oh, I've got them with Perth. Either you're in or you're out. I don't see them yeah. finishing at the pointy end, and I don't see them finishing at the pointy end or the pointy bottom. Yep. Uh, Taj Longmuir, who's another one, uh, another underage player. Yep. Uh, Ryder James off the halfback set for a big year. My South Fremantle. Yep. Sure is. They got a lot of sort of running players off halfback. Um, a lot of speed and endurance, so you wouldn't want to come up against them uh, when the they're game's fit. on the line. And when they're fit. When they're fit, yep. And you'd think they'd be fit pretty early, but if they're real fit towards the end of the year, then oh boy, you'd think they'd probably fly. So yeah, we're on that bubble, both of us. For Either or. Yeah, on the bubble. Um, Subiaco, your, your side. 
No favourites. Uh, finished fourth last year um, and beat Perth in their first loss of the season last year. And we know about Malachi Champion and, well, will he stay at Colts level? Not sure. He's been training with the league side and um, from what I've heard, he's been training pretty well yeah. uh, with Subiaco through the preseason so far. So you'd think probably league is in his sights, but who knows if he doesn't, then he'll be... Pretty strong at Colts level. I think he'll have a say at Colts level in some aspect uh, when he's not sort of with his state commitment. Some unlucky names such as Finn Henderson and Cooper Walsh, or Whisper yep. Walsh as he <laughs> likes to be referred as, uh, not included in the summer squad, which caught a few by surprise considering he was, you know, impressive at state 16s level. Um, Torrey Nelson and the Eagles NGA is another name to keep, out, keep an eye out for. And Darcy Montgomery, uh, mm. Who, like Malachi, Malachi, likes to change the hair up a bit. Uh, he's a character and still has another year before his draft eligible. Sort of key position player. Um, so, yeah, Tyler Senge, who obviously was a ball magnet alongside Riley Wills mm. last year. He's, he's still eligible. Um, there was a bit of an attitude adjustment, I think, last year. So, if they can sort of find that balance between being competitive but not giving away costly free kicks in finals yeah. or in suspensions, then that's obviously going to help. Um, two, two suspensions that I can think of off the top of my head. Lance Collard missed a couple of weeks and Malachi missed yeah. a couple as well. And they're two young players. And if you're missing your young players at Waffle Colts level, then that's in a way a big loss. It is. Charlie Burke uh, has some questions sent in. or well, not really questions, just says his name has been put forward. Um, so he'll, he'll add to that depth as well. Um, Subiaco. Is that Charlie Burke sending in a question or someone? No, he's so we got Kai Barrett sending in Charlie Burke, Cody Kostakis sending. Oh uh, no, sorry, that's another one. Uh, Max Brooks, Mitch Bell. So clearly a popular man, mm. Charlie. Charlie Burke has been around there through, through through the last couple of years. Futures, he's always been there and thereabouts. So yep. um, he's he'll definitely come out and make a mark. Predictions? I think finals should be the expectation. Um, yeah, third or fourth, I think. I don't mm. know if they'll if they'll you know win the minor premiership or anything like that. But uh, yeah, as, as we said with all of these teams, it just depends. Like Malachi is going to have a big say, um, but they got yeah. I think they they got quite a good midfield as well. And key position wise, like they got sort of backbone at every position on the ground, which is important. You need yeah. that structure throughout. So yeah, I'd say third or fourth. Yep. So I'm probably going to say. Yeah, probably them. Claremont East. F- actually, what did I have for East Freo? I don't think I had them uh, at the very top. But I'm gonna say they'll be in the mix for the top four. And Peel potentially. Yeah, on top with of Peel. That. Um, I think they'll be in that sort of mix. We'll move on to Swan Districts. Um, I have got the four players. I think it was. Uh, so I know five players who were in the state summer squad. So not a great year last year for Swans. Um, but, of course, that flag in 2021, all those players are, are gone pretty much. Yeah, it feels like with, with Swan Districts, they're either at the top mm. or they're at the bottom. But that's only natural with the changeover that happens every year at Colts level. Yeah, um, They've had some lean years since that 21 premiership, ninth and eighth, respectively. Uh, Cavisham product Otis Harvey put some impressive numbers up in the Colts last year, averaging over 21 touches a game and performed well at Hale. Yeah, he did. Uh, Tom Cathcart was set for a, a huge year. Unfortunately, he's gone undergone ankle surgery, so hopefully he can bounce back strong in, in the back half of the season. Um, fellow under-16 All-Australians, Chase Martison, Anthony Hansen, who uh, likes a 3am bedtime with Malachi, uh, and also Blake Kelly, who is brother of Luke Kelly. Um, he's generated some hype and is set to play a key part in where they'll finish. There's a lot of big raps on, on Blake Kelly. I know Luke cops a little bit about not being the best player in his family. Um, so, yeah. Blake uh, is going to contribute in a promising year, I think. A lot of solid state representation. So, Swan mm. Districts, where do you think? Not massively up there. I think they're probably either just get into finals or miss completely. Mm. I think probably that fifth to seventh range. Yeah. Or even eighth, maybe. There's some talent there. Oh, I could be proved wrong, but... I don't think there's enough talent there like there was in 2021 yep. that could fire them straight up to the top end of the ladder. And obviously a bit of um, availability with Guildford. Obviously that connection as well will, d- will depend yeah, if, on that. If Blake Kelly's still at Guildford, which I assume he would be, then that'll 
be a miss for Swans. They'll miss him. Yep. Um, but other than that, I think Otis Harvey is now graduated. He's graduated, yeah. So he will be fully committed to Swans. And I can't really comment on the other guys. But, um, yeah, I, I can't see them playing a big part at the pointy end of the year. I'm probably on the same um, page with you there. Um, like I've, I've gone very broad, fifth to yeah. Like eighth. Yeah. But I think either just make or... Miss. Yeah, I mean, there's only so much we can go on with like preseason and yeah. past performances. So I guess <laughs> round one's only going to paint the picture even more. So yeah, exactly. All right, move on to our final side to have a look at uh, West Perth. Finished fifth last year, pretty good year. Um, considering I don't think they had a heap of uh, prospects last year, and they well must admit they definitely don't have many this year. They've only got the one. At the, that was in the state summer school. Yeah, so another team, I guess they made that grand final in 2022 yeah. alongside Peel Thunder last year, finished fifth. They haven't had a massive number of players drafted in the last two to three years. Not that that's the measurement of success, but, you know, what you get with the Falcons is a really competitive group. Like, mm. even at league level, they've never had a lot of ex-AFL players come back, but they back their local talent in really well. And even at reserves level, they're constantly making grand finals, which shows that the transition of Colts boys going through the next year is working really well. Um, you say they don't have a lot of draft talent as it stands. Kale Jaron, I believe that's how you pronounce it. There's a bit of uh, controversy with if it's Jaron or Jaron, but uh, Je- we'll roll with Jaron. By far the best ruck in the state. Um, as we know, rucks don't grow on trees, so don't be surprised if he is the number one player in the state by the end of the season. Yep. Uh, he's been compared to Luke Jackson just with that ability to move around the ground and, I guess, impact outside of the normal ruck type work. You know, um, almost like a, a fifth midfielder, What sort of like what Dan Cox was in his heyday. Um, they got some – he's a Wesley College rep, so hopefully someone can help uh, help shoulder, shoulder the ruck load at both Colts and, and State to help him out. So, um, Kyle, is it, is it Wesley? Uh, I – Wait, he's a player. I need to double check if he's graduated or not. I think I, well, he was at least last year. But I think I know who you're talking about and a lot of talent. Yep. Um, Tommy Liggins says, how high does he go um, given he's the first ranked player in the state, according to some? Heard he have a big year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, look, as I said, because Ruckman don't grow on trees, they're like when, the, when someone of Kale comes along, I've no problem with them being rated so highly because mm. Luke Jackson, as I said, like he went pick three, not, but that's not me saying he's going to be a certain top five pick or anything like that or yeah. top 10 pick, but early suggestions are he's um, by far the best ruckman in the state at under 18's level. I can tell you one thing. There was a lot of conversation last year between him, Shane Waywoden and the umpiring department. Yep. Because he was giving away a lot of free kicks. So that might be the only um, concern with the way he goes about it, but hopefully you'd think 12 months ago on, he can definitely improve mm. um, and get everything right. So, because you don't want to be giving away free kicks in the ruck contest because that's just a free clearance yep. straight down to the other side's uh, forward 50. So, hopefully that is all good and um, has a good year this year. Um, Prediction? Well, well, I'll, 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 I'll be I've honest. If you have a good ruckman that just can put it right in the in the Sweet throat of, of, your, of your midfielders and you get an easy clearance, sides will be elite. So I'm thinking if they if Kale can just turn it on and almost be unstoppable, then I, I see them playing finals. But it's if, interesting. But if the midfield doesn't react to how... If, well, if Kale's turning it on and the midfield aren't exactly on the same page, then I don't see them playing finals. Yeah, I just think he's going to be so... Like obviously state focus when the champs come up. Yeah, that's the thing. And well. other him a couple of commitments, weeks. you know. Um, another player who I think potentially he's definitely not draft eligible this, this year, but I think it's Mark Lacra's young youngster Kobe Lacra um, has mm-hmm. been performing on preseason, and there that might be futures. I could be wrong uh, through I guess some cir- some umpiring circles and that, but. Um, yeah, he's another one to watch out for down the down the track. But yeah, I I'm struggling to see them having a, a successful year in terms of win losses. Um, hate to say it, but if I had to put a prediction for Wooden Spoon, I would probably lean towards West Perth just because Kale's one player and yeah, 
you need more than than one player to win to do well and yeah um having said that as i said though like they do well they back in their local talent this is only based so off well. under, under this is the summer squad is only based off underage talent from the year before yeah and as we've as we know decently well so many players put their names up in lights late in the year that we don't even know about there's probably players that we haven't even spoken about one example that comes straight to my head joe fonty yep like absolutely no one was talking about him at this time last year and look at him now he's playing uh well he's on the list at gws um so yeah i i can see them if they if kale and the midfield is click instantly then bang they're playing finals yep but if it doesn't necessarily click and say your forwards don't click then yeah i can see them in the bottom three bottom four yep all right quick psa rundown mm-hmm. obviously a lot of the main players we've discussed in colts but um we'll get to some q and a's there's some other players that have been mentioned that we'll give our our best on but the main question i guess can anybody s- stop scotch mm. i think they, can they win five in a row can they win five it's a din- it's a dynasty yeah. no matter which way you look at it um we're looking at some stats uh trinity were the last school to go five in a row they went 2003 to 2007 and that 2003 one aquinas and hale also won it with them so in a way you could you can argue that's four or that's five but i'd still five their name yep. is in the 2003 winners list but um five in a row that would be massive it would be and the thing with uh, with with scotch college is yes they have the big names of the past the elijah hewitts the dan Curtin, who only played in one of three uh psa uh champs mm. alcos when he was there but they have guys who don't get drafted or maybe aren't massive names that state level when it comes to the chance but they just contribute you think of someone like caleb dempster park you think of mm. someone like joe fondy maybe not the best example because he was he was drafted but joe matthews yeah. like these guys who are around the state program they just contribute sort of when it when it matters most um and then yeah we know like bailey banfield another one like they just they just produce these talented players on trees colin livingston there's the whole the list really does continue steve blacks just does a great job down he does there as well and they all get behind him um he's got so much experience and obviously he's still i guess in a re- in and around that west coast environment with yep. looking after the academies i don't know how much insight he gets to the actual afl side which could hand he could hand down to scotch but if you've got a great coach it can do it can do wonders and just look at trinity last year chris main took the reins yeah. and like they didn't have a heap a lot of superstar talent trinity but as soon as Chris Mann came in, they were suddenly a chance to, well, I think they either did or they, no, they nearly beat Scotch, I think, two games that they played Scotch last year. It's amazing what coaching or, yeah. I guess. And uh, 12 months before, prior to last year, they were, I guess, fighting for the wooden spoon with Gilford. Yeah. It's amazing, like, when sides are well represented, all sides are sort of well represented. Like, you look at Trinity with Chris Mann, as you said, yeah. um, being a big part of that program. Wesley with Michael Broadbridge, Shane Owen, Brad Shepard in the past. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's great to see those sort of guys giving back or giving to the to the PSA program. Um, I, I honestly don't know if anyone can beat Scotch, to be honest. <laughs> It'll like, be tough. It's, it's going to be tough. They just... Yeah, like as I said, they just got um, guys who can just fill roles. Um, it'd be good to see, like uh, I guess, the teams who may have struggled in the past, like Guildford. I don't think won a game last year. Yeah. Um, no, uh, Trinity. No, they did. They did. They beat Wesley. I think we did. Yeah, we. No, have. they didn't. Sorry, they didn't. They yeah. would. They should have won, but they didn't. I do remember speaking to Cohen Sanchez about that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm just looking through a few players. I think uh, I think I'm 90% sure. I'm trying to find it on my phone as we speak. But I'm pretty sure Shane Woden is at Aquinas now. Okay. Yep. I'm Will Schofield also involved? Yep. Or was involved at Aquinas? Um, Tom Grills comes through. Says can Max Hansen and Ch- uh, Clancy Dennis, from a Christchurch point of view, break the Alco drought? Well. I don't want to say I hope so because that's me leaning towards, um, you know, favoritism or, or Scotch not winning. But yeah, you like to see some competitiveness there. Just looking through other Q and A's about PSA. Um, 
Max Hansen, come yep. back from injury and looks to tear up in his first footy this year for uh, uh, Christchurch. Um, we know about Blake Kelly, Matthew Pentagna, who's going to win the Alco Cup. It's been, I couldn't tell you what the talent looks like at PSA level. But a scotch like a, a scotch the dollar twenty five favourites at this stage. You'd you'd say so, early early favourites. Um, there's also a question that's been sent in. Uh, Gus McIntosh, Charlie Banfield, Drew Banfield's son, Bailey Banfield's younger brother, year eleven at Scotch. Mm. So the family <laughs> continues there with um, with Bailey's success. B- younger brother of Elijah and Ben Hewitt. Uh, Zeke, he would be year 11 or year 12 this year at Scotch as well. He played a couple of first games last year. Yeah. Um, if he could potentially come through, that's another generational talent as well, you could say. Yep. Uh, Darcy Sparks says, Subiaco's Nick Maltari set to explode this season, more so from a, obviously Colts' point of view. I have heard thing, good things about Nick. Um, so how do you say taking it out? Hart wants it to be very competitive and a tight draw to the end. Head, I think, scotch. Do the five, Pete. Okay. Imagine that. Imagine the celebrations. I know the celebrations are joyful every year, but... Mm. Uh, I'm going to go for an upset. Okay, I like it. I think this side, this school has always been in the marks the last couple of years. Always, I guess, been the number one side to challenge scotch. So I'm going to go Aquinas this year. Okay. Thinking... I'm, I'm almost certain that Shane. I saw Shane Woden. Shane Woden is now the coach there. I'm almost certain I saw him. And I potentially believe that he could, you know, change fortune. And um, Ashton Warner, I believe, he is only year twelve this year. Yep, probably been the captain, and has always been a gun there. So potentially, I reckon we could see maybe a change of fortune. But obviously, wouldn't be surprised if Scotch yep. gets the job done. Uh, Ned. Reja, Guildford Grammar Alco 24 confirmed. Some would love to see uh, a, bottom, a wooden spoon to a, to a flag uh, mm. in the space of 12 or well, less than 12 months. But yeah. just before we finish up, what are your thoughts? The PSA get big crowds, massive mm. crowds. Uh, you've obviously been, a part, been of a part of it with umpiring and that. It goes without saying the crowds are going to be big this year. But what's it like? I mean, that school environment and on a weekend and, and, and that. It must be... Oh, uh, if you've got, you got a big game, then it's... If, you, if you're at a big game, then it's massive. It's like I was I was lucky enough to do uh, Aquinas, Aquinas's Aquinas Day, whatever it's called, where they had yep. every single game at Aquinas. And, oh, boy, that was massive. It was against Hale, I think it was, and it was a belter of a game, and it was nuts. Um, it's not necessarily similar, but it's almost like college football, college sport, where everyone mm-hmm. gets around it, especially yep. that first the first side of each sport, particularly footy, during winter, everyone gets around it. It's, it's nuts. Big crowd. Way bigger than what you would expect at a, at a Waffle game. Colts game on a Saturday morning. Yeah. Any, uh, we're not trying to play favourites here, but any favourite grounds or facilities in the PSA that, Scotch. Stri- uh, that stand out? Scotch. Well, you, you'd you know you went to Scotch yeah, to watch that um, second 11 cricket game. Facilities, that oval wow. is yeah. insane. Yep. So, um, Scotch is obviously number one, probably. Um, obviously, they're all good. They're all great. Like, I think I've Guildford been to every to school, and they're all pretty good. All pretty good. Yep. So, I can see why Scott, people want to go play at Scotch. They've got the best facilities in probably the competition, in my opinion, and that's probably why they're such a draw card. History speaks for itself as well. Exactly. <laughs> Thanks well, to everyone, though, who sent in questions. Yeah. Tried to get through all of them. There was a lot. But yeah, so that's our rundown. So do we want to go for a quick premiere? In both Colts and yeah. PSA? Well, or? Mainly Colts. We didn't really do that. We, we, but I yeah. said Aquinas. You went Scotch. Ooh. I know I said Claremont will make the grand final. I'm going to go for a bit of a smoky, I guess. I reckon Peel Thunder. Mm. For the flag. I'm predicting if I had to pick two grand finalists right now, it'd be Claremont and Peel Thunder. And then East Frio to make back-to-back prelims. And then outside of that, yeah, the rest that we discussed, West Perth, Subi, to be around the mark. Perth. 
I potentially think Subiaco. Okay. I'm going with Subiaco. I don't want to don't want to go with Claremont just yet. But right now I'm going to say yeah, Subiaco. Need a bit of a more of a sample size before. Yeah, I, I, I think Subiaco has some talent there that they can work with and they're always usually on the mark. Yep. And so. you see in grand finals, guys stand up exactly. and put themselves out there to exactly. recruiters. Exactly. Well, that's pretty much wraps it up. It does. Hope everyone um, enjoyed something a bit different. Yeah, something different. Definitely not in our wheelhouse. We've gone with something there. Um, but of course, thanks to Skimbro Hatlocker, Cheetah Clothing. Their website links will be in the show notes with the uh, discount codes as well if you want to go check them out. And uh, of course, if you're listening on Spotify or Apple, you can watch on YouTube uh, and then vice versa as well. Yep. Subscribe, five, five star rating, a like would be much appreciated as well, I think. It would. Enjoy the rest of Melbourne, Brian. Uh, we'll be back with more guests after that. We will. See you then.